Welcome back everybody, I hope you're all safe and well and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the one shot pulse instructions, mainly the positive rising edge instruction. We're going to see how this works inside of the PLC using the S7 1200 PLC and TIA portal. Once again before we get into the video I'd like you to give the video a like comment share if you want to as well and more importantly hit the subscribe button if you're watching us on youtube if you're not head over to youtube and hit the subscribe button anyways it helps us out a lot guys let's get into today's video so as i mentioned just before today we're going to be having a look at the one shot positive pulse instruction now this instruction is available in a lot of PLCs on the shop floor and a lot of the times we use this instruction for fine control of the PLC. If you're looking at a PLC, the scan time on a PLC, for example this S7-1200 PLC, is one millisecond. When you press a button on the shop floor, think about how long that button is pressed for let's say half a second. That there tells me that that PLC has now scanned our button press 500 times. A lot can happen in that one button press. Now if we want fine control over a system, we use the one shot pulse. And what the one shot pulse does is it takes our button press and it looks at either the rising edge of our button press when the button goes from logic zero to a logic one, or the falling edge of our button press when the button goes from a logic one to a logic zero. And then when it sees that happen, it then outputs a bit internally in the PLC for one PLC scan. And then we can use that bit elsewhere in the program for fine control. So let's see how this works. What I'm gonna do inside of network one, I'm just gonna add in a quick program to increment a value inside of a data register. So I'm gonna tie this to m0.0. .0. Then I'm gonna to go to my math functions and then down this list will be our increments similar to the last week. Drag this into place and it's gonna ask me for my data register in which I'm gonna increment the value inside of and I'm gonna choose mw100. Enter that. It's then asking us to select the data type. So all I need to do is where these question marks are on this instruction. I just drop this list down and then I just select integer. This is just going to be a 16 bit value. That's all I'm interested in. And then from here, I'm just going to save my work and then download this to the PLC. And what we're going to do is we're going to imagine that that M0.0 .0 is our button and it's going to increment the value on MW100 once on every scan. This instruction here works on every PLC scan. So what we should see is when we press that button, the value should constantly increment and keep on incrementing until the button turns off. Let's just say start all there and then finish. Okay, minimize that, go online. And then what I want to do is I'm just going to open up a watch table, add a new watch table. And in this watch table, I'm just gonna type in MW100 and the display format is going to be decimal. And I'm gonna use decimal plus and minus and you'll see why in a second. Drop this down and then just go to monitor mode. You don't need to download watch tables to the PLC. The watch table remains inside of the PC, inside of the laptop. So let's just go to our main network here and right click M0.0 and modify to one. And what we should now see is this value constantly increment. And if I just look inside of my watch table, you can now see this value inside of MW100 incrementing on every PLC scan. And this is doing this every one millisecond. And you can see it's just ramping its way up there. And eventually what's gonna happen is you're gonna get to 32,767 and then it's gonna go into its negatives. So we'll just wait until that happens there. There we go. And you can see now it's went into its negatives and now it's starting to creep it back up into the positives. And the reason why it's doing this is because this integer is a plus or a minus and the PLC uses what it calls the sign flag to tell the PLC whether it's a positive or a negative value. And there we go, we're back into the positives. As soon as I then turn off this value here, modify this back to zero, the value is gonna remain at where it last left off, which here was 5,593. If I then just modify it to one, and then modify it to zero, in that short period there, 
7,574. That's how many times it incremented it between that 5,000 before to my 7,000 now. So it had about 2,000 scans inside of that one modified, the one modified, the zero. That there can cause us problems on the shop floor, because if you think about an operator, when he might press a button on the shop floor, let's say we're controlling the temperature inside of an oven. When he presses the button to increment the temperature, he might only want to increment it by one degree. However, instead, when he presses the button here, what it's going to do is it'll increment it by several hundred degrees. So how can we fix this? Well, we can use the one-shot pulse instruction. Some PLCs have what we call differential instructions. If you go to Omron, you can use the at sign before the instruction, and that there will tell the PLC this is a differential instruction, and it's to be used on one PLC scan. Other PLCs may not have that. So what we use is we use the one-shot pulse. So let's have a look at the one-shot pulse. I'm just going to come offline here and go offline there. And now we're going to first of all create a new network. So I'm just going to create a new network and I'm going to then add in my M0.0 .0 here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the BitLogic folder on the right hand side. And in this BitLogic folder is our P and our N. And you can see here there's actually two types. There's a one which looks like it's inside of a, a contact, and there's one which it looks like it's inside of a coil. The first one we're going to have a look at is the coil format. So here, I'm going to take my M0.0, .0 and I'm just going to drag across this P. Today, we're only going to be able to look at the P, and the P is the positive rising edge. The N is the negative falling edge. All we're interested in here is the rising edge of the input signal. Now you'll notice when I've added this one shot pulse instruction inside of network one, it's asking us for two addresses. The first address at the top here is our output bit. This is what the PLC will turn on for one PLC scan. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie that to M0.1. And then the second address is what we call the storage bit. And the storage bit is purely for the CPU only. We don't use it anywhere else in the program, it's mainly for the CPU. And all it really does is it tells the CPU when the inputs before that coil has turned on. When it sees it go from a logic zero to a logic one, the storage bit will then turn on just like an output coil would. And the PLC looks at that storage bit and when it sees that storage bit go from a logic zero to a logic one, that's when it sees the rising edge and that's when it turns on our output bit M0.1. Now this storage bit here, always address it to an internal bit. Never address it to an output on the PLC, it's always an internal bit. So I'm just going to use the next internal bit, M0.2. So here I've got my M0.0. .0. When this signal turns on, it's going to turn on the storage bit. The PLC is then going to see that storage bit then turn on. And that then is going to trigger M0.1 for one PLC scan. Now I'm going to change my control signal to my increment and I'm going to change this to M0.1. Save the work there and download it. Now that we're online, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on M0.0. .0. And what this is going to do, it's going to trigger the storage bit and turn it from logic 0 to logic 1. The PLC will see that and turn on M0.1 for one PLC scan. If you stare at this contact here, you're not going to see anything. It's going to look like it remains at a logic zero, but it doesn't. It actually does turn on. It's just so fast that the laptop doesn't update and show you it. What you will notice though, is our MW100 will only increment to one and that's it. So here, I'm just going to change my hexadecimal to decimal. So we're not going to use the watch table now. I'm just going to change it to decimal. I'm then going to modify M0.0 .0 to 1, and what you'll see is MW100 go to a logic 1. If I zero that register, and then right click and modify it to 1 again, you'll now see it go to 2. If I zero it, modify it again, 3, 4, 5, and that's how it will work 
so on and so on whenever M0.0 .0 turns on. It's only going to trigger that instruction now on one PLC scan. And this is what this one shot pulse does. Now this is the one shot pulse coil. Now what this coil is mainly used for is monitoring several input signals. So if you have several input signals here and you want to wait until they all go to a logic one before you turn on a bit for one PLC scan, you would use this coil here. However, we're only monitoring just one contact. You don't actually have to use this coil in that case. What we can use is the contact itself. So again, I'm just gonna come offline here. I'm then gonna delete network one and I'm gonna change M0.1 back to M0.0. And instead of using the standard contact, what I'm gonna do is just double click this contact, drop down the menu, and then I'm gonna select the one with the P inside of it. Select that there, and again, it's gonna ask me for a storage bit. So here I'll use the storage bit from before, M0.2. And now if I save that, download that to the PLC, select yes to that. Minimize that window there, go back online. If I just zero my MW100, there we go. Now, when I modify this back to zero and then modify this back to one, it'll count one. Modify it to zero, modify it to one, it'll count two. That there is the same as the one shot pulse coil, however, it's only a contact version. This now only monitors one signal. You can't monitor several signals with this contact, just the one. So if we are only monitoring one signal like we're doing here, we can just use that one shot pulse contact. And that there, guys, is the one shot pulse instruction. That there shows you both versions, the coil and the contact. We didn't have a look at the negative instruction. However, that just works on the falling edge of the input signal when the input signal turns off. If you want to learn more about Siemens TIA Portal and the S7 1200 PLC, as well as being able to access a real Siemens S7 1200 PLC and TIA Portal for you to actually download your programs to and test with, and then what I'll suggest you doing is enrolling onto our Siemens TIA Portal programming series online course. To do this, just open up your internet browser and then go to www.scantime.co.uk, select e-learning, and then from our e-learning page, all you need to do there is scroll down until you see our Siemens TIA Portal Programming Series. Select Add to Cart, and it's currently 30% off as well if you're looking to save some money. And then simply select Checkout. From the checkout, if you're a new student, all you need to do is then just create your own MyScanTime account. If you're a returning student, simply enter in your email address and your password from when you created your MyScanTime account and then continue to make your purchase. From there, you'll actually be able to get access to the Siemens TIA Portal course where we teach you more about Siemens TIA Portal and the instructions used inside of Siemens, as well as how to create things like function blocks, functions, your own watch tables and data blocks. Not only that, but we also give you access to a live PLC for you to actually write your programs and then download and then test them with. That there gives you unrivaled experience which you can't find anywhere else. I look forward to seeing you guys on the online courses and I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Have a great weekend. I'll see you later.